We can all agree that photography is a pretty expensive endeavor. Bodies, lenses, accessories, software, all of this really does add up. And although most people will have a budget for their photography, most of them will spend that money on the wrong things, which might not necessarily bring them the value that they hope for. So in this video, I just wanna share with you my philosophy on how to spend money on photography in order to get the most value and the best experience. Also today is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later on. So let's say you've just saved up 2000 pounds and you really want to invest it into your new hobby. Most people will literally max this out on the best camera that they can get for that budget. However, what they've just done is blow their entire photography budget on a camera, but then have no money left for the photography. So all that they will end up doing is just playing with the camera around the house, taking a few pictures of the kids, of the dog, and then they'll put it on the shelf and probably never touch it again. Now, a much better way to look at it is to split your photography budget into four parts. First is obviously your gear. Secondly is education. Thirdly is a big photography experience. And finally is day-to-day -day photography. Now, gear is an obvious one. And if this is your first ever camera, I would say spend around half of your photography budget on a body, a lens, some editing software, and maybe one or two accessories. But the goal here is to keep it as minimal as possible. Now, definitely don't recommend buying cheap. Instead, I would say look at the used market. It's much better to buy a good quality used camera than to buy something cheap that will just break down on you or that you will outgrow in a matter of months. For under a grand, you can get a good used Fuji X-T2, the 18 255 kit lens, a sling so you can comfortably carry your camera gear when you're out and about, the 11 inch iPad Pro from one or two years ago that you can pick up quite cheap on the second hand market, a 10 pound a month Lightroom subscription so you can then store all your photos online, edit everything and you'll still have some money left over for some important accessories like a spare memory card, a spare battery and a hard drive to back up all your photos too. So for around about a thousand pounds you literally have all you need to go out, take some great photos, edit them, back them up, share them all in one little kit. With around a thousand pounds left, let's now look at some education. What do I mean by that? I mean camera guides, courses, one-to-one -one workshops, anything which will allow you to learn as much as possible in a very short period of time. Now that could be something specific like how to use a new camera. It could even be something on the more artistic side, how to see good light, how to compose. For around 250 pounds, you can probably get yourself a PDF on editing. You can probably get yourself a, let's say, Skillshare membership so you can learn a few more things. Or you can even get yourself a one-to-one -one mentorship in person with a photographer that you like. And then that 250 pounds is literally gonna just like leapfrog you in terms of what you know and in terms of how you go about photography. Essentially what you're doing is you're buying time because eventually you'll figure this stuff out for yourself anyway, but this just makes it all happen a little bit quicker. So now you have all your camera gear that you need and you've had some training, you know how to use a camera, you know how to spot good light, you know the basics of composition, and you're excited to go and shoot. But you still have 750 pounds left. And this is where I would say, do a one-off photography experience to really kickstart your journey. So take 500 pounds and see if you can book a weekend away to just do photography. Now, if you're watching this channel, you're probably into street photography, maybe some travel photography. So I would say book a European city break or wherever you are in the world, find the nearest, let's say big city that maybe you've not even been to and just book one or two days to go there and all you do is shoot. By being somewhere new, by using your camera, by using your new skills, you're really immersing yourself in this new hobby. And you're gonna probably, not probably, you're gonna definitely walk away with some amazing images. And there's no better morale boost than having your new gear, knowing how to use it, and walking away with some great photos from your first trip. And finally, we have 250 pounds left for what I would call your day-to-day -day photography. Now, if you look at photography like a muscle, if you train it, 
it gets bigger. If you stop training it, it kind of dwindles away. The same with photography. The more you're out there shooting, the better you get. The moment that camera goes on the shelf and you don't pick it up for two months, then that skill can slowly start to fade away. So there's no better way to keep up your skill than to devote maybe one day a week or maybe one afternoon or one morning a week to photography. Now, obviously, if this hobby is important enough to you, you'll definitely find half a day or a few hours a week. And this £250 a month, let's say, is there to fund that. So it's there to fund the train ticket into, let's say, London to shoot. Then it's also there to fund a bit of lunch and some coffee while you're out doing it. And you see these little trips, these little days out over a long period of time is what will make you a better photographer. Sure, the amazing trip that I talked about earlier is nice, but that only happens every so often. It doesn't happen every week. I mean, if it is, great, but for most of us, it doesn't. So yeah, these little things will definitely take you very far. So make sure you have your day-to-day -day photography budget. At this point, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is my main portfolio where people come to see my best work. I have full control of how my work is presented and interacted with. Squarespace is also the hub for my business, my newsletter, and my travel photography blog. Finally, I use Squarespace as my social media landing page and my digital business card. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, having your own website is never a bad idea. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to get a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching. So as you can see, for the same sort of money as buying the latest mirrorless camera, you now have an equally good camera considering you might just be starting out. You also have a computer to edit things on. You have a little bag to carry all of this around with you. You've done some education, you've done some training, so you already saved yourself countless hours. You've been on a pretty cool trip to really get you motivated and um, enthusiastic about photography, and you still have some money left for you know your weekly trip into your local city to keep practicing photography. Now, if you ask me which is better value for money, all of that, or let's say the latest mirrorless, the answer is pretty obvious. Now, of course, everyone has different levels of income and different budgets. If your budget is higher, there is nothing wrong with buying a more expensive camera or going on more trips. Equally, if your budget is lower, then maybe cutting back on a couple of things will save you money. So maybe cutting back on that one amazing trip and instead just going into your nearest town might be a bit more beneficial. Either way, you're in the best position to figure it out. All I'm saying with this video is just don't blow all your money on the camera. Okay, that is all. But before I go, I would love your opinion on this topic. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Or do you have a different, let's say, attitude to photography or philosophy to photography and how you would go about spending your money or uh, where you would kind of invest your money within this craft? So use the comment section for that. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you for your continued support. And I'll see you next time. Bye.